Lawrence Blanco of CLSA who joins us from Sydney. But Lawrence, morning. Thanks for joining in. It's been a terif terrific rally so far. What kind of targets do you see now for the S&P and the Dow first? Yes, yeah, so looking at, at the U.S. market and, and using the S&P as, as the guard, we're really looking at uh, a push up to the January peaks. We're still looking at 944 as our minimum upside target uh, with potential to, to move up to the 1,050 mark. So 944 would be our minimum expectation for the recovery. Uh, have any of your medium-term technicals changed, suggesting that this is no, not just a bear market rally or some, but something more powerful than that? Well, within Asia, what we have noticed is, is, is a clear indication that breadth has improved uh, substantially. So when we look at the number of shares within the regional uh, benchmark, excluding Japan, uh, that sits up at 85%. Uh, so that's the number of shares trading above the 40-week moving average. As far as the advanced decline line goes on a weekly basis, that's also turned up above a 20-week moving average. So uh, what has changed over the past month has been an improvement within participation in the rally. Now, now the longer-term picture, we would really have to retrace more than 62% of the decline that we've seen to, to get sort of uneasy on, on the longer-term uh, structure of this and, and still think that this uh, is part of a, a bigger secular bear market. Um, and what we see now is a cyclical advance within that. Lawrence Morning, how high would you attach the probability, though, that global equity markets will not go back to retest their lows in 2009? Yeah, difficult to put, put a, a probability number on it. Um, I, I, would, I would look at uh, focusing on, on at least a 62% retracement, let's say, for the Nifty as uh, the top end of, of the target range, which is around 4,300. Um, as far as retesting the lows this year, um, I think surprises up to, to the upside on the equities uh, with the breakdown really coming as a 2010 event, or the rollover, I should say. There has been uh, outperformance generally amongst emerging markets compared to the others, Lawrence, whether it's Brazil or India. What do you see on the charts of markets or of indices like the Nifty and the Sensex? Yeah, so uh, again, I mean, the, the clear... Uh, pattern that uh, the Nifty painted out was a three-month trading range, uh, and then we saw the break above the 3,100 area, and and really points to a minimum upside target of 3,700. So within striking distance of that, I think in the short term the market is looking uh, overbought uh, with with the risk of of a pullback or at least a consolidation uh, period happening. Mm -hmm. over the next week. I mean, as far as emerging markets go, clearly has been the lead uh, equity. Uh, equity indices across across the globe, they've made lows in October versus the developed markets that only made lows in, in March. So there's definitely been liquidity inflows into the equity side, uh, which we have noted, uh, and that's caused uh, part of the end of our performance is uh, clearly the flow of uh, liquidity. Mm. Do you track the Chinese index, uh, <clears throat> Lawrence, because that was the first to break out and it tore ahead of the pack and in the last fortnight or so, it seems to be lagging some of the other Asian markets which have played catch-up. Any signs that the Chinese market could be topping out in the intermediate term? Well, no, more, more of a consolidation. I mean, I look at the, the Shanghai Composite and the HSCI as a proxy uh, for, for China, and, and really still looking at the Shanghai Composite moving towards the 2,750 area. We're trading around 2,555. Uh, you're quite correct. I think there has been some rotation out of let's say, the lead markets and into some of the laggards. Um, so, so the Nifty has caught up, the HSR is catching up. So you are seeing some rotation into uh, some of the lag laggards within the region. Mm. In case there is a pullback in the Nifty, where would you now say that there are very strong supports where you would be tempted to go long again? Well, well clearly, obviously, the, the old support area or resistance area down at the 3,100 area uh, has turned into support. But if you're looking at... at uh, Closer to the current action, you had a very small uh, trading range that developed between 3,500 and 3,300, and that would be, uh, I think, some strong support that coincides with the 200-day moving average and would be an interesting uh, place to look at uh, adding exposure. What kind of short-term targets have you set for A, the dollar, and then for crude, Lawrence? Yeah, um, crude, probably one of the more interesting charts. It's, it's a laggard within the commodity space. Uh, we've seen the breakout above the $50 mark and really looking at further follow-through towards uh, 70 71 uh, as the upside target. So, so lacking uh, the, the charts of oil. As far as the dollar index goes, um, using that as a guide for currencies, we're looking at at least a pullback towards the 80 level um, and there's key support at 77 78 on, on the, the DXY index. 
Lawrence, appreciate you joining in this morning. That's CLSA with their view on the technicals. Quick word then.